we're here at East Denver, and I'm standing with Ilya from Near Protocol. And uh, you traveled in from San Francisco. And um, tell us a little bit what Near Protocol is. It's a blockchain similar to Ethereum, but not based on Ethereum, right? So can you tell us uh, how it compares? Sure, yeah. So kind of the way we started Near Protocol, we wanted to pretty much bridge the gap between people right now in the ecosystem, right, which are like hardcore hackers trying to you know solve hard problems, and kind of the next level where you know there's a lot more developers out there who are like really interested in building new applications but maybe not as you know uh, not as ready to pretty much learn new technology you know learn new language programming language and kind of fix all of the bugs that uh, some of the libraries have while you're developing them and on the other side there's a kind of usage problem right where as a customer you actually have a huge barrier to entry to start using the current uh, kind of blockchains. So we are trying to address this by pretty much reworking how the protocols work and addressing all these problems. Uh, so it starts kind of through pretty much obvious thing scale, right? So like current systems don't scale very much. And if you think, for example, as a uh, if you take like one of the popular applications right now, like League of Legends, let's say you want to tokenize their hats and other. Uh, goodies, well, they have 100 million monthly active users, they'll just crash any network. Like, it doesn't matter what current, like, scalability solution is there launched, it will crash that just by, like, sheer number of transactions. Now, to solve that, what you need, and, you know, this is an obvious solution, is scalability, is sharding. So, you know, there's a bunch of folks working on sharding, but there's no actually, like, developed solution as of yet. So, we're building sharding, we have a lot of interesting trade-offs to pretty much prefer, kind of, uh, you know, finality versus maybe sometimes liveliness, which allows us to just kind of propagate uh, transactions across shards faster. Um, but, you know, all of this is trade-offs that can be, like, iterated over. The second layer is, as a developer, right, uh, you know, if people here on Hackathon, you know, it takes about, like, six to, s to eight hours if you didn't know anything about blockchain before to actually like write a first contract and start using it right mm -hmm. so what we want is want to shorten that time get people on the hackathon right away you know launching mm -hmm. apps so we did a lot of kind of so it's WebAssembly, which means you can r use kind of current languages right c++ rust and specifically we focus on typescript mm -hmm. which is a javascript with types uh, developed by Microsoft. It's a somewhat popular on its own, but also like a, if you're coming from JavaScript world, it's pretty easy for you to adapt. Mm -hmm. and you can start writing smart contracts with this right away. Mm -hmm. And we built like an IDE so you can do it. We built, you know, all the tooling. You can deploy it from like one click. You can run unit tests. All this is actually already running uh, in production. It can be tried on studio.nearprotocol.com. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is actually we're fixing a lot of like how accounts work. And it's similar in a vein what you know folks in the Ethereum community doing with meta transactions, universal login, and a lot of other like uh, format, formatic, etc. Like, how can we make the user experience, customer user experience, like at the end, workable, such that people don't actually need to care about blockchain right away? Mm -hmm. So we're doing that on the protocol level, pretty much easing the developer's job as well as kind of making it straightforward to. Uh, users kind of start using it, and then when they care about the blockchain or they care about you know uh, using the assets themselves instead of letting the app using for them, they can like securely exchange the keys and, and get a handle of them. Mm -hmm. Great. So what I'm hearing is that compared to Ethereum, um, you, you have a unique solution that is similar, but uh, the advantage of yours is uh, ease of use and a unique sharding solution that makes it scalable, right? Um, yeah, I mean, so like with sharding, you can always like argue how unique things are. Like I think all of the current sharding solutions are somewhat similar, and it's just different uh, trade-offs. Like, do you have similar chain, same chains or different chains? Do you rotate validators or not? Do you do cross-chain transactions through beacon chain, etc.? So we took a somewhat different trade-offs than you know what Cosmos, Polkadot, and Ethereum 2.0 are doing, and we like we can prove or we can argue why we think they're better. Uh, but at the end, you know, the experiments will show. Like, from our perspective, we want to kind of make it really easy to build and start kind of getting community to build on this and start iterate from there, mm -hmm. right? Like, if we need to change something in this trade-offs because developers tell us, hey, you know, this, you know, this doesn't work because of that or there's some security uh, kind of concern, we can actually change that. So the mm -hmm. so idea is actually to continue developing this as well. Great. So I heard you mention um, TypeScript. Um, and uh, WebAssembly and, and things like that. So if I understand correctly, you're using TypeScript to implement your own node for, for um, near protocol, is no. that correct? Oh. So the node itself is implemented in Rust. 
Um, but what we're doing is we, you, you write your smart contracts in TypeScript okay. and we compile them into WebAssembly and run it inside the WebAssembly container in the Rust node, right? So what this allows to do is, I mean, so WebAssembly is like way more kind of accepted standard across the industry. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, EVM, EVM was like earlier, mm -hmm. so that's why it's uh, like, there's a total reason why it was built, but at this point, kind of WebAssembly is becoming a standard for uh, virtual machines, you know, Polkadot is using it, Ethereum 2.0 is planning to use it. So, but the TypeScript specifically, I think, is just a, a ease of use. Right now, pretty much, like, if you are on WebAssembly world, you're writing it either in Rust or in C++, right? Both of which are pretty hard languages to master and can have a lot of, like, uh, extra, well, Rust, is more safe, but it's harder to write. C++ is less safe, but mm -hmm. like can lead you to a lot of issues. So we think TypeScript actually like will allow to bring us way bigger number of developers in this ecosystem. Gotcha. So um, that's interesting because um, Ethereum uses Solidity for their smart contracts, and um, other blockchains um, I've seen have their own domain-specific language for smart contracts. Yeah. Um, and so in, instead of using a domain specific language for smart contracts, you're using an existing uh, language uh, that, that is already commonly known. Um, so um, it, it, th that seems like a good advantage. Um, and can you use the full blown feature set of TypeScript or is it somehow a dumbed down limited version of TypeScript um, in order to uh, deploy a smart contract? So right now it's for sure like pretty limited and uh, there's a team actually working on improving the compiler uh, which we are sponsoring from AssemblyScript. The, like I think over time it will become r richer and richer. There's also like a limitation on WebAssembly itself, like it's not as... Uh, like there's a lot of like still proposals in flight to improve WebAssembly and kind of it's a play of like multiple components. But from perspective of like you know uh, writing smart contracts, it's pretty like full featured. So you know we, we internally already writing a bunch of stuff and there's like few people already trying to use it. And usually programming language is not like the TypeScript compiler itself is not as limited you know as as uh, I mean Solidity actually in many cases. So. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so it's a platform for building DApps, right? Um, um, can you speak about uh, existing DApps that might be using Near Protocol and, and sort of um, what you're trying to cultivate in, in your own ecosystem? Sure. I mean, you know, we're talking with a lot of uh, current existing apps that are uh, either need scale or kind of want to figure out better user kind of experience. So we're trying to see how we can match their requirements and make sure that our platform matches them very well. So that, you know, it's an ongoing process. Uh, on the other side, we're actually starting to talk with people who are kind of, did not actually even deploy on Ethereum or other blockchains because they know it will not work. And we're talking with them, figuring out what is their requirements and how can they build. So few of them actually are built, like trying to use our platform right now. So it's like more, you know, new, new protocol doesn't have any, I'm sorry, new dApp doesn't have any current like implementation so they can freely try new stuff and like see if it works for them. And we're working with them to actually, you know, finalize APIs, figure out what you know edge cases there are, and kind of uh, make sure that it works for this type of use cases. Uh, I mean, high level, you know, I, I, my personal opinion, like right now, right now, you know, centralized finance obviously is like a big thing. Ethereum is kind of like its scalability part of Ethereum for decentralized finance is not, I think, a big problem. What is a big problem is actually like using this decentralized finance. So that's where we think the actual usability is coming from. And then on the other side, uh, I think gaming is huge, right? Like both like putting existing game assets on the blockchain as well as building new games that are fully blockchain native. And here I think, you know, scalability is a huge problem and as well as usability again. So I think like this is two things that are kind of coming this year. Mm -hmm. And then there will be more stuff that we are excited about, which is like open state applications, which are more on like, how do we build a lot of small blocks, building blocks that kind of work together on behalf of user. Mm -hmm. And this goes, you know, this could go in like many different forms and may require more components into not just blockchain but also other components but uh, I mean this is like a little bit too early to talk before we actually have blockchain working. So um, is the focus of near protocol is it permissionless uh, public blockchains or do you also support consortium blockchains and private blockchains that want to build on top of near protocol? So by default this is a public blockchain uh, but we do have a what we call a private shard 
So because it's sharded, uh, pretty much we have this kind of dynamic allocation of new shards. Um, and what you can do, you can say, hey, I will just run my own shard. Just add me to the beacon chain and say, hey, like, register me. And now you run it, you're responsible for everything that happens there. And I mean, this can be a consortium of nodes instead of one. And uh, there's some limitations on what you can, like, do outside. Like, but the idea is it's the same client that you run. It's the same, like, protocol of exchange. It's, everything's the same. It's just, like, can have a private data and can kind of compute private smart contracts mm -hmm. and then like you just only can move the assets you moved in so there's like some tracking on the public part what assets are in so you cannot like move up, like you cannot fake new assets out mm -hmm. but whatever state additional state and logic you want to execute is all private okay is there any uh, bridge uh, to, to, to bridge from ethereum to, to your network or? yeah so we're planning to build a bridge for sure because I mean there's huge number of assets on ethereum that I think would benefit from like scalability and usability that we bring. So we can bridge that and make it super easy for people to kind of bring their assets, use them in near and actually bring them back. So it's like a two way, two way pack. Fantastic, okay. So um, how can our listeners uh, get in touch with your project and, and start building, uh, where can they find you? So the easiest way is to go to our Discord, it's near.chat. Uh, we have really good medium which describes a lot of our kind of decisions as well as like we compare to other protocols. We have a, uh, I mean, nearprotocol.com and like few other websites like studio.nearprotocol.com where you can start building uh, as well as uh, pretty much, I mean, YouTube is where you watch a lot of videos and we have, we're starting to publish more and more content, mm -hmm. including reviews of other blockchains as in part of our whiteboard series. Mm -hmm. Great to hear. Well, uh, much success to your project, and uh, thanks for coming to ETH Denver. Thank you. Good to have Thank you, you Ilya. Nice.